All right, my friends. <clears throat> Today's fantastic superior. Just kidding. It's just plain old boring rabbit tip today. Now, today's rabbit tip is going to talk about <clears throat> closing the loop for a sketch. I've got some requests recently. This, people have not been able to. Are they the most common things that happen with when you're trying to draw a sketch and why it won't close or what the possibilities will be and how to find the problems, okay? So what um, <clears throat> we know that there's a sketch that has to be drawn whenever you're making a floor. You know, you're drawing the perimeter outline edge of a floor. And that's also true for ceilings, soffits, um, come on, roofs, and oftentimes when you're making a profile back in a family, okay? So let's go without any further ado. I'm going to share my screen with you. And we will start right here in our fantastic, you know the building. This, that's right. The little architect's building. Here we are. Inside this little architect's building are some things that we need to take a look at. So let's go look at our first floor plan. Let's suppose, well, not suppose, we actually do have a floor in here. So I highlighted it and hit delete. Ah, it's gone. All right. So let's reproduce that. And I'll go through the issues that some people have when drawing a sketch. Okay. So here we go. Work with me. I'm going to click on the architecture tab. I'm going to click on floor. Okay. And I've just got it set on a six inch concrete slab. Irrelevant what the floor is. Irrelevant. So let's just talk just for a sec. Up here at the top in the draw tools, okay, we're not going to talk about sloping the floor right now or the span direction. We're just talking about the boundary line that goes around, and we're in sketch mode right now. When the whole project ghosts like this, we can't delete anything. We can't move anything. We cannot do anything in this project except draw this boundary, this perimeter of the floor. And if this were a roof, it would be similar, except we're making a roof. blah de blah -de blah You guys hear me? Okay, so here we go. The different tools that we have are for our use, and they put them here to help us. Yes, there's a straight line and a rectangle. There's also all kinds of polygons and curves and all the pieces and parts you need. They've given us also a couple that help speed up because we're working on a floor. It has tossed in this tool right here where I can click on walls and it will give me a line, but it can give me one of two lines. All right. And I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. I'm going to zoom in on this. Let's just zoom in on this wall here. When I hover over this wall, what it's going to do is it's going to suggest to me the left side or the right side of the core element, which in this case is the stud right here, the metal stud. Okay. So if I hover over the wall, you guys can see it. If you look carefully right down through the, where this window is, there's a dashed line right there. That is because I'm closest to the exterior edge of the stud face. If I hover my cursor over here near this side, it suggests, you can see the dashed line right there. It's suggesting this, the inside face of the core, so that when I click, it would put it at that location, okay? Now, Revit, what I've done is I've just made a choice in my project. I have said I prefer the inside edge of the core. So you could back out and quickly just click on the other walls that go around your project and Revit will automatically pick the similar face of all those other walls. Okay. So you'll notice here that it's using the ins. I didn't have to zoom in and be careful where I picked. It knew that my first pick was my preference. Okay. Just saying. All right. So let me delete all those. I'm going to, 
delete. Hello. I'm going to delete. Quick. Um, there we go. Quick way to delete is hold my cursor on one of them and hit tab. And it highlighted them all. And now they're gone. Okay. See, gone, gone, gone. So let's do it again. I'm going to go boundary line and pick walls. Now look, I'm going to pick the center, which near the center of the wall, which is the inside face of the core. Again, if I just quickly, bang, 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 I just go around this quickly, I don't have to zoom. It will pick the outside face of core all the way around. Okay. That being said, and if I hit the, the done button up here, which is finish the edit mode, it gives me, I say, I typically say don't attach because I'm, I'm busy. Okay. Don't attach. So here we got a floor just like we had before extends all the way to the core. Now that was fairly simple when it comes to sketching. I'm going to hit edit boundary and we're going to go a little further. Let's suppose right here at this front door, you wanted the concrete slab to jut out, like jut out here to catch the, um, the outside edge where it meets a sidewalk, let's just say. So what we want to do is we are going to split this. I'm going to hit split and I could split it with two, two breaks and delete that middle piece, or I could split it with one, but I use two so that you can see easier what I'm doing. Now, if I want to reroute this sketch mode, I wouldn't use walls because I've already got walls. I would want to switch to another tool. And the other tool in here is pick lines that I already have. So I can pick that tool right there and pick that little guy. And now I've got to be careful because it will put a, um, an edge condition, one of these boundary lines, wherever I pick. Like if I pick the curve of that door, it's going to put one there. If I pick, if I pick the inside edge here or this, vertical face there. It doesn't matter where I pick, it's going to put a line. So that's one thing people, you have to be very cautious where you click. Okay. So let's, I'm going to hit control Z to get rid of those three, because what I want is I want this edge here, which is the, the face of the door where the frame touches the wall and the other side. But then I want one across here. Now I could pick this face of the wall. Now look what it did. It, it put one full face of the wall, at which point now I would want to um, trim right now. So look at this. I'm going to use the trim tool and I can say, I actually like this going down. Okay. I'm going to use trim, trim, trim. There we go. I want this going down and then this one going over, this one going back up and this one going over. So I used this tool here. Now here's where you can get in trouble with that tool. If I, let's just suppose one of these lines is missing. Okay. Let me just delete one. Bing, there, that line is missing and I want that in there. Now, if I don't use the wall tool and I choose to use the pick lines tool, let's just suppose, because maybe I'm not just following walls. Maybe I want this floor to go somewhere else. I can come in here and if it, it's suggesting the center of the wall, but I can hit my tab when I hover where I want it and I can tab until it finds the place I want. Okay. And if I click once, that's great because I got my line where I want. But if I happen to pick twice or three times or more, I can start getting some errors and half of the people I work with dismiss the errors and they say, oh, stupid program. It's giving me errors. I don't like that. In my humble opinion, read the errors. That said, I had an overlap line, but oftentimes people are in a hurry and they get all the way to this point. They're like, okay, I think I'm good. And if you try to finish, what will happen is eh, it'll say cannot have overlapping lines. I'm like, what? Cannot have overlapping lines. What are you talking about? And it's not showing me the overlapping lines here. I'm going to show you what you can do. Often, I'm going to go ahead. Let me just get rid of one of those. And when I try to finish, look at this. It says cannot have overlapping lines and it shows the two overlapping lines in purple. I mean, in orange. 
they're on top of each other, so you know there's one exactly under the other. But I, just one second ago, I'm going to put one back. Look at this. Just one second ago, okay, I just put another one on top. So that means there's three lines on top of each other. And when I try to finish this, it says I have overlapping lines, but it did not highlight them orange. Because there's three lines there, it cancels out the ability of Revit to actually show me where the problem is. Okay? Just saying. So if that ever happens to you and you cannot figure out where the problem is, here's a trick I like to do. Okay? I draw a bounding box and I drag a bounding box. And I'm dragging it around the end of the building and I should have one line in there. And when I get that end highlighted, I can glance down in the bottom right corner of your screen will tell you the number of items you've selected. And indeed, if you look on my screen, it says one. Okay, that's good. So if I grab here, I should have two items. Okay, and I glance down, two. Okay, just saying. Cross the bottom here. I should have one, two, three, four, five. So if I did a bounding box, I should have five. And I can verify that I have five. And I can keep doing that, checking these walls and areas. And right here, I should have one. And when I highlight it and I look over and it says, you've got four lines in that area, you know that's where the problem is. Okay? I'm just saying that's a very quick way to find your problem is by just glancing down and knowing how many lines you should have there, doing a bounding box, and it'll tell you how many you actually have, okay? And usually my bounding box is from left to right so that it's only inclusive, so that I know it's not picking all the other lines. Unless I say, well, that should have one, two, three, and it has six. I'm like, I still don't know where the problem is, but I isolate it like that, okay? So I'm gonna hit delete, and I'm gonna go back to picking a line, and I'm gonna put one here, and then we're gonna move on. Tab, tab, bam. Okay, so that, that should close fine, okay? Don't attach. Okay, so that closed perfectly fine. Now, let me show you another error that people have all the time. I'm going to highlight this. Hit Edit Boundary. Okay, let me, just, let me just zoom in here and talk to you. If you're drawing your lines, let's say you use the line tool, and you're click, 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 and you're drawing your own lines. If you have an intersection or a corner, and there is a, one of the lines is extended past, like this, even ever so slightly, doesn't matter. When you try to finish, it will highlight the two lines orange that are the problem. And it'll highlight them in your project. You're like, what? Something's wrong with these two lines. And the error says they can't intersect. So you just hit continue, and then you can go down there and resolve that. Okay. Likewise, if there's a cross, if these two cross each other, it'll give you the same error that they can't overlap. Okay. So that's two more errors that you could possibly get. Now let's do this, back one off, okay? This one is in the right place. All right, let me just go trim. If I trim these two to each other, but if for some reason I, one is a little bit shy, see that's just not quite. What it's gonna do, it's gonna say, there's an open end. The air down here says the ends are open. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? It's easy, hit continue. It's easier to see when it's backed off further when I, there, there. See, what Revit does is it gives you two orange dots at the two ends that are a problem area. Okay, so all I have to do is hit continue and then go resolve that issue. All right, so we're getting down to the last thing I wanna show you, a couple of them, there's two more. Let's say, I'm gonna split this, okay? I'm gonna split this one line up here. Break out a little piece, okay. Obviously, that's not going to close. See, eh, you knew that. And it makes that sound. Oh, you guys didn't know that? Click this button right here, the eh button. And so when you try to finish, it goes, eh, okay? There we go. All right, watch. Eh, pretty good. Okay, so obviously this is not going to work. But sometimes people have overlap, two things overlapping. So I'm going to lift this one up a little bit and pull it past. Okay? You see how those are clearly overlapping each other, and if I align them, I get an error, which it says you've got, your lines may not close a formed loop, a closed loop, 
And most people go, whatever. And they dismiss the error. So what we've got here, friends, is two lines that overlap each other. And when you go to um, finish, what it's going to do is give you the two dots, but sometimes they're hard to see. So because one of the dots is under a line and one is over a line. So it's hard to see what's going on here if you're not perceptive. You've got to be very perceptive. Okay, so you'll see them. You can see the ends. You'll know that those two ends are the, the problem areas. Okay, and then all you got to do is drag. Revit doesn't care if you drag these things end to end, and that's legit, and it will close for you and give you an actual a closed loop. All right, let me address the last one that could possibly be a problem. Okay, so here we go. Let me pick that floor and edit the boundary. If for some reason you were doing the clickety lines and you happen to click something quite short, and let's just, this is what the problem is. I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to put a small line right, and I got there. Lines overlap. But let me just do a boundary. See that? Can you guys see that right there? There's a little tiny piece of a line on top of the larger line, such that when you try to finish, it highlights both of them, but because they're exactly on top of each other, you, you can't see where the problem is. It's hard to find the problem when this is the issue. And I'll show you a trick. Okay, here's a trick. Wait for it. Okay. One of the cool ways to find problems is to highlight the whole loop. And if you're unsure of how to do that, you could drag a big giant bounding box around the whole thing, okay? And it highlighted every item. That's not the way to do it. So watch this. You put your cursor on one of the lines, one of the lines, okay? And then hit your tab key. What it's going to do, it's going to highlight the loop that is closed, okay? And when I pick it, okay? It turns blue, but if you'll notice right here, the problem piece is still purple or magenta, whatever you want to call this color. Okay, you guys see that? So you're able to find the problem quite quickly when you highlight the closed loop. Just saying. That is one way that I can find that thing. The only other way to do it is say, okay, this, it's the old, I need, one should be here, one should be here. Wait a minute, I got three. What? Oh, there's one. Oh, you guys see it? Two. So when you, you're you dragging your boxes around, you start seeing where the problems are. Okay? All right. I'm going to finish. I'm, oh, yeah. Delete that little guy and finish this. And now we're back to having a fantastic floor. All right, friends, I hope that that helps in some way to resolve the issues that you may have sometimes when trying to close a single closed loop during the edit or the sketch mode when you're building the perimeter of one of your um, system families. All right. I think that about covers it. If you guys have any questions on those or even have a better way of finding the secret little lost line, well then just put it in the description box below and I will address it or I, I will say thank you. I am up for learning just like you are. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Get out there and design something amazing. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.